We're back with Fanny Willis on the stand in her hearing motion, a trunk case. Listen to this question. For purposes of this form. I believe there's some classification of somebody you like don't have a personal relationship with that gives you a hundred dollars. Why y'all borrowing money? They did a lot of borrowing money. I know I, I don't borrow money like this. You know, um, why they they don't they make money? Why are they borrowing money from each other? I know people borrow money, but I'm saying since I've been listening to this case, I noticed that everybody borrowing money, borrowing money, borrowing money. That's all I hear, and I'll pay you back. And I'll pay you back. I thought these were some big money folks. Uh, personal reasons. Anyway, I did not take gifts from him. And so your reason for not disclosing any gifts from Mr. Wade on exhibit number 21 is that the aggregate amount on a net basis was less than $100 in the year 2022. Is that correct? I did not accept a gift of him of more than $100 in 2022. The one exception to that, if you, because I, I want us to be clear, is we probably went out to eat multiple times in the year. If you're considering eating a meal, you know, because we went out multiple times, that probably went to the level of more than $100. But if, if we're doing tip for tap like that, I probably paid for as many meals as he paid for. And so... I did not receive any gifts from him. The question on the form. I understand the, the question. aggregate in excess of one hundred dollars, and your testimony is that you did Mr. not Google. receive in the I aggregate more than one hundred dollars. All right, Mr. Gould, you can sit down now. I know why he yelling at her. That question, Your Honor, she answered as to specific individual gifts, and you're not listening to my answer either. So we're done. Very well. Okay, Mr. Rice. Why is they talking to her like that? My goodness, why y'all so angry? Boy, this is a mad courtroom right here. Jesus, I hope don't nobody have a heart at that. Now here he go promoting his book. To this. Now, well, you're, he, you're, you're tendering it. Is it with a position of the state? Thank you. Mr. Gill, are you using this to promote? No. Uh, we could market for impeachment purposes. I'm a little wary of entering an entire 300-page book. Is no, that no, 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 no. Move that book out the way. Move that book out the way. And let's get to the money. This is advertising his book. 
right here in front of the courtroom. If he know what's in the book, just tell us what's in the book. What's in the book? I don't know exactly what every single line, if it would pass hearsay or relevance or et cetera, et cetera, but I don't think it needs to be admitted as a, an actual evidence for the record for you to do what you need to do with it. So, well, uh, Your Honor, I, I understand. I, I just would... Uh, it's, it's Mark again, Exhibit 22, and I'll let you we'll move from there. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Now, you were asked a little bit about this bill before, correct? I think Mrs. Mrs. Merchant, Mrs. Merchant did. asked me some questions, yes. And, and you gave about, what, about six interviews to the authors of this book and a sit-down? No, sir. You did? Uh, no. the, was it she answered what? how many interviews she gave, in her opinion? How many, in your opinion, do you believe you gave, and how long did they last? Two to three, maybe 20, 30 minutes. You said your testimony is at most... Do you think that you gave maybe an hour to an hour and a half to interview to the authors of this book? Oh, you mean in total? In total, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Anywhere between definitely not more than two-ish hours. Okay. But you also were telling when they were the, the title of the book, of course, is A Hard Charging Georgia Prosecutor, a rogue president and the plot to steal American election. You, yes, you, you, you know, had, relevant. Why, why, why is the title of the book relevant, sir? And, I had no and then I'm going to ask her the, whether or not that was the... Don't the answer the question to do it to you, not to. What do you mean by that? Well, because they, were, they were sat down and they told her why they were there to interview her. And why, and why does that matter? Well, I think it matters because it shows what the, what they, they want her to give her version of what uh, her life story. This is a life, almost sure. a life story of her. So that's why it's relevant. But if, if the court thinks it's not, then... No, no. It, it's, it, it could be relevant to your issue of the forensic misconduct that has been alleged and maybe some of the, the motives at play when it comes to forensic misconduct. But I'm not seeing, again, what we're here for today was the relationship and or any financial elements of it. Correct. Well, I think it's clearly relevant to the uh, forensic misconduct, also relevant to personal interest in terms of the finances. Let me, I didn't make ten cents off that book. Hold up. I didn't make ten cents off that book. Now, Sammy, close your mouth until the judge finished speaking to him before you say the wrong thing. Jesus. She won't keep her mouth shut until the judge tells him to say something. She's... <laughs> statements that she hadn't already been confronted with by Miss Merchant. Well, other than I want to, to, to focus on when you were telling them about your financial straits and you were living kind of month to month, uh, that is what your financial status was back in 2018 after your election. Mr. Graham, we, we covered that at length. Um, you just, if you're at the end of the line, I'm sorry about that, but we've got to find new ground. Well, uh, you know, and, and let, let me move on to, to, to my point here. So the point is, that what you're telling us is that uh, you were uh, in financial straits, but really that your testimony today is you had a cash hoard of maybe up to $10,000 in cash where you laid your head at night so that you would dip out and there would be no record of it, correct? That's not what I'm telling you, sir. That's not, that's not at all what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is that throughout the course of my life, I have always kept cash in my house that cash has ranged from times you know my father would probably be ashamed of this because he would say it should be more but that time that cash at times has ranged from five hundred dollars to maybe nine thousand dollars and he, he would be like that is not what i told you to do um i've always had that amount of money what i've told you is that when i travel you do better negotiating when you travel if you have cash you can go to get the cab they say oh we're gonna charge you 300 for the day well i got american cash will you take it for 150 and so it's my practice to take money when i travel we're not talking about a whole lot of money we're going to the bahamas now that makes sense now i'm not gonna break her down so hard on that y'all now that makes sense what she's saying now her dad did mention that you know how we you know how you put money up. Y'all know you you don't put everything in the bank. You leave a little cash out like that. So now I'm not gonna be hard on her on that. So she did tell the truth. <laughs> Fifteen hundred in cash is in my pocket. 
Connecticut or at the most 2500 Belize was actually probably the most money I've ever taken and it was taken because it was a big deal my 50th birthday sucked his 50th birthday it, it sucked it was terrible no. Your Honor, and so I'd like to get back I, to some questions here I'm, I'm trying to answer it the narrative would help if we so, so let's, 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 let's move to the specific yes or no okay. here have you told us today that you would keep uh, a cash hoard in your residence up to about nine thousand dollars yes or no of my uh, adult life and so let's even be more specific than that probably from the time your honor i'm only asking for yes or no rather than uh, well, we, have, we have already covered this so i know you're laying the foundation but it's already been laid so uh, yes. uh, the, the filibuster is here i'm trying to move through the filibuster yeah, but, but we're not talking about a lot of things and so it's it could be two thousand it could be fifteen hundred it could be seventy five hundred it just depends on how what you're doing at that time what i'm telling you is when i traveled i took cash i find that when you travel especially to foreign countries the american dollar does well and it's good to have cash you can negotiate with the taxi driver with the jet skis with the uh, and it's not a lot of money we're talking about Your honor okay we, understood we, Ms. We, Willis. We let's get to, the, let's get to a and, question mr uh, and so you have cash in your house but you had a lien, uh, a tax lien on your property, is that right? I don't believe I had a tax lien on my property. You didn't have a tax lien on your property. you got to talk a lot, Mr. Hunt. Okay, we, we already covered that, Mr. Gillen. I need to go around here. I'm asking the question. I'm trying to figure out how someone can have uh, have a tax lien. And ask that question. But not use the money that they allegedly said they have. Well, I think Ms. Merchant asked that exact same question. She said she didn't use the money to pay her tax lien. So what's your question? That's new. So, so I don't know going to build on that to say no more uh, buildings it's already built all right it's the same way you pay a bill so just just put the top on it if you need to okay it's the same way you owe a bill and go shopping well uh now you know see she need to keep her mouth closed when that judge is talking to him close your mouth funny funny put close your mouth i apologize if i pronounce her name wrong just close your mouth into the judge let it she so I guess she's been around a lot of men that bosses her. God, that's the impression that I'm getting that. That's the reason why she pushed back hard like she do, because men usually come hard on her. That's the way she seemed like. That's how she talked. But she talking out of turn that's going to mess her up, mess her up some kind of way. Now, have you ever used, did you say earlier that you used Cash App? I would pay Robin Bryant. I use Cash App. What is Cash App for the record? I don't know that for the record. Let's keep going. Well, there's a, uh, if you're paying Robin with Cash App, why aren't you paying, uh, allegedly paying Mr. Uh, no one legend here. What, why aren't you paying, allegedly, Mr. Wade with Cash App? I don't think Mr. Wade does Cash App. Do you ask him? I think he's told me he doesn't do cash out. Okay, so that's the reason why you didn't use cash out. He's sitting next to me. I handed the money. Because there would be a record in cash out of your making payments, correct? Yes, uh, but I didn't think that I was making a record in a personal relationship. Because when you're filing your, and, and I know that I'm going to you know, move into this uh, financial statement here, but you were asked uh, just a second ago about your non-disclosure form or your, excuse me, your disclosure form of a, an Exhibit 21, where um, we agree that I don't have a job. Mr. Wade is a prohibited source, correct? I don't. I, what I agree to is I don't believe he's giving me gifts. You, you would like to classify these trips as gifts, but I've always paid my fair share on these trips, so I did not look at them as gifts. I don't think that what this is disclosing, and they can tell me if they mean something different, I don't think it means that if you go to dinner with somebody over the course of a year and it gets to 100, you're supposed to report it. If my understanding of that is wrong, um, I've probably been to lunches with a couple of people that over the course of a year they paid, I paid. Let, let me, let, for evidence source means, we already went over this, Mr. Gillen, Mr. McDougall. Well, you, you're on, I have to. I have Fanny, to, be, cry, be quiet, funny. Uh, I don't know why you can't be asked. Well, it's okay. Uh, then you 
for to, uh, tw uh, 2022 disclosure form did not list any of the thousands and thousands of dollars that Mr. Wade li uh, paid for on trips that you were on. Yeah, isn't that correct? That's because Mr. Wade was paid that money back, or he was paid uh, due to the fact that I bought the plane ticket or I paid for the hotel. The, there were never money that he gave me. But that wasn't the nature of our relationship. You know, there's so many men, and Mr. Wade is one of them, where the nature of the relationship is they're just paying a woman. The nature of our relationship is companionship and friendship. Despite the way people would like to paint certain women, it's just not true. Final question. And not a single solitary documentary piece of that that's 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 showing that you have withdrawn the cash to pay for That's not accurate. Thank you. Okay. The time period between February 2021 and January of 2022, while you were staying at the Yuri Condo, did your father ever come and visit you during that time period at the Yuri Condo? Ms. Cross, I would imagine you have a number of topics to cover with Ms. Willis that'll take more than 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I did. Okay. Then I think we've reached a stopping point for today. And so, uh, Ms. Willis, I'd ask you to come down. I'd uh, also remind you that uh, you're not to discuss your testimony or. Uh... Yeah, this courtroom is fire and desired. I mean, they is hot like popcorn in this courtroom attitude just flying here and flying there y'all tell me what you think support lanita uh miss real deal our channel y'all please support me I, I stays up overnight be sleepy and i work so hard to bring out entertainment and informative um crime and store uh court cases in in all i ask y'all to do is hit the like button if you happen uh, join the channel, John. Please join the channel for four dollars and ninety nine cents. I love y'all. I'm out.